Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about a sweatshop romance written by Abraham Caton. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, in this work, we are introduced to a group of workers in a sweatshop. Uh, it's a pretty much, they're making coats within this sweatshop. It is not a pleasant place uh, to be in. Um, it's America, and this is a part of America when, you know, you're not in, in the modern day today where there's um, uh, minimum wage standards and, 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 you know, workers have so many rights that protect them. The sweatshop that we're introduced to within this work, it's very, um, it's, of course, it's very hot because there's burning, there's a stove that's always on, there's um, flat irons that are always on. And it's not really even a factory or a shop. It's actually uh, the boss of the shop, Lipman. It's in his house. It's in one room of his house. And the workers, you know, a group of workers, they, you know, you have um, a few people working there throughout the days. And it's not even like their, their wages are different. Uh, like the finisher, who is this girl by the name of Bale, uh, she gets paid $5.00. Um, the baser, who's by the name of David, he gets paid uh, $12, and then the operator of the sewing machine, he gets paid $14. Uh, and, and these workers, you know, they're just all working as hard as they can, working long hours, and not really getting paid that much. Um, and life is not easy, and also Lipman and his wife, they treat them less than human beings. Um, well, not really Lipman, more so of the wife. Because basically what happens as we watch these individuals, as we get introduced to the sweatshop, uh, we recognize that it's not a pleasant place. It's hot, they're sweating, they're working hard, long hours, um, and there's no upward mobility because it's a sweatshop. I mean, it is America. Uh, they can quit whenever they want. They're not um, held to the sweatshop. Uh, you know, they're not forced to work there. They can leave at any time, but... Pretty much the conditions for job at that time in America were not uh, were not pleasant. Um, but I mean, there was work and you got paid, so I mean, at least you were earning money and maybe you can have some hope for the future. Um, because I mean, that's the one thing human beings are good at. We're good at having hope for the future and that things will get better. So we get introduced to some key characters. Um, um, Heyman is a very important character. He's the uh, sewing machine operator. Uh, he's a very, uh, he's a man, he saves his money. He's always looking at his bank account. He's always saving any penny he can. Uh, any penny that he can save, he saves. Uh, he, he pretty much doesn't take pleasure in any of life's, uh, you know, thing, you know, pretty much the way that he's described within the short story is that Heyman, I mean, if he had, a, if he had money for ice cream, he wouldn't, get ice cream, if he had money that would make him happy, or any activity that would involve making him happy, he's not going to do it because he's saving up so that he can marry Bale, the, the finisher. Uh, he really loves Bale, or I don't, the, the way that this presented, I guess you can say he, love, he loves Bale, but it's really like, there's this idea of marriage in his mind that he wants to accomplish. Uh, he sees the girl that he wants to accomplish marriage with and, and you know, having a family and, and a household and all that kind of jazz. Uh, and, and Heyman, he sees Bale as, uh, you know, this, this woman that's going to help him do that. Um, and he's kind of like courting her within this work because, you know, he's walking her home from work. Uh, he buys her fruit here and there, but he doesn't really spend, like he's not buying her gifts. He's very... Um, tight with his money. He's not spending his money. He's not, um, you know, throwing his money around. He's really, you know, buckling down and just saving everything that he can. And the baser in the sweatshop, he's younger. He's more outgoing. He's more, you know, stick to your morals. Heyman is pretty much more keep your head down, stay out of trouble, save your money, find a nice girl, get married, have kids, and then, you know, try to live a long life and then die he's kind of like stay you know under the hay don't don't you know don't rock the boat don't get anybody mad don't lose your job don't 
you know, he's not about standing up for himself. He's not about being spontaneous. He's not about doing things that are uncom uh, uncalled for. He takes calculated risks. Heyman is all about taking um, calculated risks. If, if he's going to do something, it's something that's going to produce some good results. Uh, he's not going to do something, you know, straight off straight out of impulse or anything that's going to cause him any harm. Uh, in his courtship of Bale, I mean, he's he sees her for like three months and he never proposes. And back then, you know, three months was, was good enough for a proposal. I mean, women were not going to wait a year, two, three years. That's more of the kind of like the modern day standard. Back then, um, this was uh, published in, in 1898. Uh, so at that time, you know, people didn't really have time to waste. It was, you know, it was quick. You saw someone, you liked someone, you took them out for a couple of weeks. Uh, you spend a couple, you may, I guess you date them for a couple of weeks and then you were good. You had enough information. You're like, all right, we're getting married. We're having kids. We're, we're, we're going to have a household. We're going to die. And then we're going to be done with this life. Life was quick. There was no time to waste. Uh, especially with the hard work that they were doing. I mean, you're not going to live that long, especially if you're in the poor class, uh, especially if you're if you're not really, you know, you, when you're not wealthy back then, you're going to die quickly uh, because your job alone, you know, there's enough stuff there to kill you. Um, so Heyman is taking his precious time on asking this girl to marry him. Uh, and pretty much th during one day in the shop, um, the Lippman's son, uh, he pulls on Bale's hair. She screams. Uh, Heyman tries to stand up for her, tries to pull the boy away from uh, from Bale, and he th does do that. And then he goes back to his machine. The boss comes in. Um, Mrs. Lippman brings her guests, and he, she's just trying to impress her guests. And she gives Bale money to go get soda for, for her and her guests. And David tells Bale to, to stand up for herself because at the same time that Heyman was like, you know, courting Bale, David already, you know, David, like, he, he's a very interesting character because uh, we see him, like, judging, you know, people's body parts. So, like, he, within the short story, he looks at Bale's nose, eyes, lips, and he thinks about kissing her. Uh, he thinks about... Uh, Heyman's features, his nose, his face, whatever. Same thing he does to uh, Mr. Lipman, his boss. So, I mean, David, he's, I mean, this is an incredibly boring job. You're sewing, you're, you're making clothes, you're making coats. Uh, it's hot. Uh, sometimes Bale sings and, and, you know, sometimes people, uh, you know, don't like her singing. And it's, it's monotony. Uh, it's a dreary... Uh, bleak job. You're doing it for your for your check for your your couple of dollars at the end of the week. You're doing it because you have to. Because I mean, for a lot of people around the world, you work not because you want to. You work not because you love it. You work because you need food to eat. You need a place to sleep. If you don't work, you don't got that. And I mean, yeah, you just don't got that. Um, and and pretty much. Uh, what ends up happening, the boy pulls on Bale's hair, she screams, the mother comes in, asks her to buy soda, David tells her to stand up for herself, Bale stands up for herself, I mean, she usually goes out and buys the soda for Mrs. Lipman, but because of the fact uh, that, you know, David's kind of like um, establishing this type of self-esteem, self-confidence within Bale, she stands up for herself, she's like, no, I'm not a servant, I'm a worker here. Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I have to be your servant. And the, the wife, she gets mad. She screams. Her husband is, you know, uh, a lap dog and he's going to do whatever his wife says. And now her job is in jeopardy. And David, he now puts his coat on. He, and, and Bale follows suit. And they're marching out of this job because they're standing up for their morals. They're standing up for their dignity, even though they're in the poor class, even though they're not making a lot of money. They're standing up for what they believe in and who they are internally. Heyman is basically cowing in the, in the corner. He's mumbling, even though his girl kind of, well, yeah, because he was courting her. And she expected her him to propose to her, and he was expecting to propose to her. But when push came to shove, David was the one that stood up for Bale and told her to stand up for herself and not be crushed under the, the wheel of, of 
you know, your boss or your boss's wife or your oppressor. And Baal's like, man, you know, David's really, you know, kind of there for me in, in, in an arduous, you know, time. And, and, and Haman is just, um, he's just um, in the corner. Uh, so basically, uh, they storm out, Baal and David, they storm out, they quit, they ask, they say, you know, have our, our, our money ready, ready, whatever, you know, you owe us in terms of wages, uh, have it ready, uh, because we're, we're quitting. They quit, uh, David finds a new job for himself and Baal, they get married and, and, you know, Haman loses out, uh, yeah, he loses out because um, he was too slow. Uh, he didn't know, like, I mean, he was very, you know, meticulous, very thorough about his ideas, his plans for the future. But, you know, love and romance is more spontaneous and is more uh, passionate, more emotion-based. Uh, Eamon is more logical and more step-by-step -step type of person. And, and... Honestly, for 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 ninety five percent of life, you need to be like Haman. You need to to calculate the risks. Uh, you need to to be thoughtful and logical, and and how things will hurt you. Uh, but at the same time, this this short story is not about being calculated and being and and, and taking calculated risks. It's about being um, spontaneous and standing up for yourself, um, and also being prepared to kind of like uh, uh, um, you know suffer the consequences because David I mean it's it's tough to find a new job uh, that was one of the worries that Bale had uh, she did she always listened to Mrs. Uh, Lipman because she didn't want to go look for for a new job especially for for a woman at that time it was hard to find a new job um, especially a job that wouldn't kill you uh, because you know men were high you know highly favored within the um, within the job market uh and you know women were were you know if there was if there if they couldn't find any men to do the job then they would look at women uh but it would be very difficult for a woman to find a job but david he finds a job uh for him and and, and bail um Heyman pretty much you know he gets left in the cold he gets left by himself uh, after this whole incident happened, this incident happened. It takes him a couple of weeks to even go see um, to go see Bail. And again, when you're a guy and you're taking that much time, you know, Bail pretty much is like, well, he's not coming to see me. He hasn't called me. He hasn't, you know, done anything to approach me. And she was prepared to marry Heyman. She was going to accept him no matter what because she didn't really have that many options. Uh, but he, because of his, his, he's so timid, because of his fears, because of his cautiousness, David is this macho dude, this young dude that comes in. He has this confidence, this self-esteem, this, this, you know, standing up for yourself type of attitude. And he's like, you know, uh, he, he's telling Bale what he thinks of her. And he, he's saying how much I like you, how much I love you, how much I want to be with you. And literally they get married, they get engaged within a couple of weeks that we, that couple of weeks that that Heyman took to 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 you know uh, iron his thoughts, um, David was putting on the moves, and you know he gets engaged to Bale, and she's like madly in love with David because he's like this bravado coming out of nowhere, and and Heyman gets left alone, and the story pretty much ends with David and Bale getting married and and going to find and build their own lives. And Heyman pretty much left with his bank account that he that he literally is fluffing and piling his stacks of money. And when I mean piling stacks of money, he's not, you know, rich by any means. He's just saving literally every possible penny that he can. And um, at the end, he's just left alone with his with his money uh, because he lost his woman. Um, so, yeah, that's what happens in the story. Very short story, but very, you know, it's a very interesting story. Um in terms of deeper meaning, in terms of analysis, I mean, you can definitely see that, well, from my perspective, the way I see it, uh, as, you know, as a person that really likes to think things over, um, I can't fault Heyman too much. I think you do need planning and, and uh, logical thinking and, and, and reason in your life to have a successful life. 
but at the same time, spot you know, being spontaneous, standing up for your for your morals, standing up for what you believe in, is very significant and very powerful, uh, especially when it comes to romance. Um, Heyman wouldn't stand up for his girl. Uh, he wouldn't buy her things. He wouldn't like. He wouldn't take her to fancy places. He wouldn't buy her soda when they go out. He would just be like fruit, which is cheaper. Uh, so he was. He would go for cheaper things. He would go for um, simple things. And I mean, she was fine with it because she didn't have any other suitors. But to a woman, when this man is, you know, he could afford it. He just, he just, I mean, it would cost him, but he could afford it. And especially when you're trying to win someone's heart being cheap is just not, it's just not the way to go. Um, and David, who's making less than Heyman, he's, you know, taking her out to places that are more expensive, that are more um, promising. And and even though it's costing him more, you know, he's showing that there's no cost that's too high for this woman. Uh, and, and this pleases her. Um, so, I mean, I guess... Heyman can comfort himself with his stacks of money and, and I, I don't know, um, I guess keep looking for someone else in the ocean. I, I mean, it's his life. Um, there's many choices that he can make to make it better or worse. Uh, but, but this is a very tense, like, sweatshop. I, I mean... You see the differences in opinions, the difference in ideologies, the difference uh, in in how to live life, um, and everybody has their own own thing that they're getting out of the sweatshop. Mrs. Lipman is just she sees herself as um, you know this woman that's that's going towards upward mobility. Her husband has a business. She has you know a, a somewhat good place to live. I mean, she's not rich by any means, but at least she has people working underneath her um, and her husband has a business and she's like showing her friends how good I'm, I've become and how, you know, I've, I've, you know, I'm making more money in America. And, and, you know, she tries to even display that dominance by making bail this worker of her husband do things that a servant would. And, and the moment that you know, she gets, you know, turned down by asking Bale to do things for her, you know, she's kind of like brought down a peg because, I mean, she started, sometimes when you're in poverty, sometimes when you're in situations like this, you you take anything to kind of like make yourself feel higher. And when somebody, somebody like Bale brings you down, someone who's like, you know, you to you might seem like a poor servant, when that person brings you down in America, you know, it hurts even more because... You know, you realize where you are. And Mrs. Heyman, uh, she's, wow, wow. Mrs. Lipman, she's not rich by any means. Um, so to have Bale bring her down is not, is not pleasant at all. Um, so very fascinating story. Um, very tense. Uh, a lot of pressure. And, um, well, I mean, that's what you can expect from a sweatshop romance. Um, tense quarters, two men fighting for one woman, but it, it all comes down to uh, perspective and, and how you look at life and certain things and how to approach it. And uh, last thing I'll say about Heyman is that the, the way you can look at finance and business and, and progress can't be the same way that you look at love and romance and, and marriage. There, it's not... You know, it's not the same thing. Business and, and marriage and romance are just are two different worlds and, and you can't use the same methods to conquer them. Um, so, yeah, that's all I have to say about this work. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.